Hi friends, welcome to Harmony Hills Home and Garden. I'm Jenny and we live and garden in Baltimore, Maryland, Zone 7. Today we have some problems with our irrigation system that we need to fix. Look at my window boxes. Yeah, the timer on my irrigation system, which is right down there behind me, has stopped working. So we're gonna switch it out with a new kind of timer. And I just thought I'd bring you along and give you my experiences with these automatic watering timers. So come with me, let's take care of this problem. I installed the irrigation system here in the front yard. It's drip irrigation. I have three zones of it. Um, in the early summer, I would say, is when I did this job. And I had been using this Melnor Bluetooth four zone automatic timer. Now I had high hopes for that because I love the idea that I could sit on my living room couch just inside the window here, bring up the timer on my phone through their app, and then manage the timings of the watering timer. Turn it off when we've had rain, turn it back on, make it go longer, etc. based on um, what I thought it needed. And I could do that from inside the house. So the problem is I have had three different of the same model timers on this system this year. I ordered two last fall, knowing that I would be installing them. I thought I would get it done last fall, but I didn't. Um, so uh, I installed one of them here in the front garden, I would say in June, I would say early June, and um, it worked fine. And then uh, I also put one of the, the, the second one on the backyard when I went on vacation. I used the second timer that I had purchased to set up the backyard vacation watering system. Well, when I came back from vacation, very shortly after that, the one in the front yard stopped functioning. I couldn't get it to open the valves to, um, to send the water out. I couldn't get it to work via the app. I couldn't get it to work with the manual push buttons. Nothing seemed to work. So I contacted the company and told them I was having problems. They very immediately replied to me and said, we'll send you another one immediately as soon as I um, sent them a picture of the model that I had and told what the, what the problem was. So I got that replacement one and I installed it here in the front yard and it was working great for about three weeks. And then it too had the same problems. First one valve started to fail. So I switched that valve over to the uh, other zone that, you know, it's got four zones. I only had three in operation. So I took the one that failed and put it onto the one that was still working. But then within a couple of weeks, all of the valves again stopped working. <sighs> so then I decided to take the one out of the backyard and put it out here in front. So this one that's attached right now is actually the third one that I've had on this front garden system. And it now has failed as well. I don't think that I can recommend this Melnor Bluetooth four zone timer to anyone. It is just failing within a month of using it. So I'm gonna be addressing that with the company separately, but I got a new type of timer. This one is not Bluetooth compatible. This one is made by Eden. It still has four watering zones, but it is all manual push button timing. It is an auto timer. You can set up to four zones. Each zone can be set for multiple watering times per day. You can make it go on a specific day of the week. You can make it go every two days, every three days, every single day. Um, lots of flexibility with how you can program this. Actually, I think it's a little bit more flexible than the Melnor was um, in terms of how much timing and what kind of schedules you can set up. I'm really hoping that it was the electronic part, the Bluetooth part of the Melnor that failed, not the mechanical part, because if the mechanical parts are what's uh, failing, I'm wondering if this one is gonna last me very long either. Anyway, so I'm gonna switch out uh, the timers on this system, and um, that's really all I had to share with you today, but let me just get that job done. Okay, I got the old one off 
And now it's time to attach the new one. Now I've already set the timer on the new one following the instructions that came in the box. So I don't think I'm gonna show that to you. It's pretty easy. It's just like setting your thermostat inside your house if you have a uh, electronic thermostat, it's just like that. So, all right, let me get the new one on here. Now I have three zones and four outlets. So I'm just gonna pick numbers one, two, and three. And uh, I don't really care which one is which as far as, I know the red one is for the north side uh, ground. The green one is for containers and the white one is for the south side ground. That's uh, how I've labeled them. So I'm gonna put the red one on first, I guess. Next, I guess. And the last one is the white. Here we go. I'm going to turn the water back on. And now I'm going to manually test. It's easy enough to manually test. You push the on off manual button and you select which zone you want. I want to try zone one. Tell it how many minutes I want. Let's say two minutes. Press OK. This one is working. Excellent. Shows a nice little spigot there to show that it's working. Zone one. It's going for two minutes. Good. We'll let that run its course. Then we'll test the other ones. Okay. So, zone one worked. Now I'm going to press the manual button and scoot it over to zone two. Uh, how am I going to do that? There we go. What's dripping? Oh, this connection is not tight Zone 2 is going now. Why is zone 1 going again? Alright. Again, zone 1 is leaking here. One, why are you leaking so much when you turned off? You're just like losing water out of there like crazy. What's going on? I'm going to turn this off and figure it out because you don't want to see me cursing. Now I've got zone two running and I see that I have a leak going as it's running. So I'm going to try to tighten this connection and see if that helps. All right, so that ran for a minute. Now I'm going to try zone three for one minute. There it goes. I'm also getting leaks on the back flow presenter there. All right, see, it's coming out of here again. So I think it's the back flow, back flow preventer doing its job. 
preventing water from going back up in there. The pressure on the line was uh, abruptly, um, when it abruptly stopped, it caused some backward pressure, I'm thinking, and so that prevents that water from going back in there. So I think it's working as designed. I'm going to say that. Uh, I'm not a plumber, so I don't know. So, okay, so I've got the new timer set up. I am going to eventually be mounting this on a post over here. I just haven't got that done yet. So that job is done. There's no saving these window boxes. So I'm just going to take out all the plants, leave the arborvitaes, water them really deeply. You can see the arborvitaes are starting to droop, and they're very susceptible to drought. They're not drought tolerant at all. So I'm going to try to save the arborvitaes, get rid of these other plants, and... For a minute, they'll be empty because I don't have anything to replace them with, but I guess eventually I'll put some fall plants in there. It's a shame. This was a very bountiful container, but I wasn't paying attention. And in the hot weather that we had, when the timer goes on the blink, the containers suffer. Oh my. I'm trying to leave some soil in here for these other writings to live in. I don't want the whole thing to come out. So I'm definitely going to have to really soak these because I'm sure they're going to be hydrophobic or repelling water as soon as I try to put water in here old plant tags out. Oh, so dry. I have uh, one line of drip here. This is quarter inch tubing with emitters inside. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six emitters in this side and then six in that side as well. Hopefully those arborvitaes will perk up. I'll put more water on them after that water has a chance to soak in a little bit. Um, hopefully I can save them. All right, let's go to the other side of the house. It's much easier over here where I have better leverage because I, you know, able to get in from the top. Over there, they're just so high up. This cinnamon basil smells really good here. It's dried right in front of my nose. like a tree in here. It's crazy. Cinnamon basil looks like it's a great plant. Maybe not for a window box. I've learned that. It put on like trunk. Crazy big. Let me get some of this soil back in here. Now I've got them all empty. Arborvitaes are staying in, I hope. Water this, get those arborvitaes back to life, hopefully. Okay, so I hope I've saved the arborvitaes. I'll be leaving the window boxes empty for, I don't know, a little bit of time. I wanna 
see see what I want to put in there for fall. I'll probably be putting something in for fall and then taking that out and putting something in for the Christmas season. So I'll think about it. If you have any suggestions for me for these window boxes for the fall season, let me know. I haven't been to the uh, garden center in like three weeks. Can you believe it? Oh my gosh. Um, so because I still have stuff in my stash that I haven't planted. So. Anyway, so that is my job for today. That uh, Melnor Bluetooth 4 gauge timer for zone timer, excuse me. I can't recommend it, sorry to say. Luckily, it wasn't a sponsored product that I was using or anything like that. It's just something that I bought. But I have to say, not a good product. I'm hoping this one by Eden is better. The without the Bluetooth, without the electronic control, with the mechanical control, hopefully that'll just be better. So I'm gonna use that for a while and see how it goes. And I'll let you know if I have problems with it as well. Hey, I hope that you're not having trouble with your drip zones. I hope that your garden is beautiful and gorgeous and everything is perfect. Wouldn't that be nice? Thank you for watching me today. I hope you're having a wonderful time and I will see you again very soon, friends. Take care. Bye-bye.